Moskowitz. Help me make a choice. Wyatt or Fergus? You can only save one, and depending on which character you chose, the story and interactions with your crew will change dramatically. So let's take a look at what's different. Obviously, the first big moment that the choice has an impact on is when you're captured by Engel. During the encounter, Fergus will lose his arm, while Wyatt gets his ear severed. But one of the other major differences is how they each react to Sigrun. Make it kick. What? Hey, I'm no cold-blooded killer like your mom. Thank you for this. Give me one good reason not to blow your brains out right fucking now. Real slow, like, a little disoriented on account of the blood loss. I can help you. Wyatt is much kinder, while Fergus is a lot rougher around the edges. This is something that's important in the two storylines. Wyatt is more relaxed and passive, while Fergus is a leader and more confrontational. The next scenes are when you return to the U-boat. In the Fergus timeline, it takes place in the boat's surgery. Set is busy attaching a robotic arm to replace the one he lost, but even during the operation, Fergus is giving out orders. Come fuck right, water. This is what we're gonna do for Caroline. Sake, Max, stop helping. In the Wyatt timeline, his injury is less severe, so the meeting takes place around the war table. However, again, it's his response to Sigrun that's a major difference. Wyatt essentially just says that they should trust her, while Fergus says the same thing, but he also adds a threat. Give her a chance, I guess. I, she saved my life. She saved Captain Blaskowitz too. Why is there a Nazi on the board? If it wasn't for this Nazi traitor, we'd all be dead by now. We owe her, so we can't kill her. Unless she fucks us over. You gonna fuck us over? No, mister. And I'm not a Nazi. Not anymore. This is also when you'll get your hands on either of the two weapons, each tied to a timeline. Fergus gets you a laser rifle, and Wyatt a diesel grenade launcher. Wyatt came up with a basic concept. The design is not ay ay ay, it's experimental, but it will be very useful. Does this end kill Nazis? Oh. Enthusiastically so. The next diverging scenes involve both men beginning to overcome their recent challenges presented to them. For Wyatt, this is the loss of Caroline. With her gone, and of course Fergus long dead in his timeline, he needs to step up as the leader. I just... Look, I couldn't do it, okay? It's too much. Caroline meant more to me than anybody else on this damn ship, and now everyone is expecting me to pick up the torch. All right? A little follow-up clip also shows the start of another part of Wyatt's storyline, the hallucinations. Fergus has his own troubles to overcome. Although he also must step up as leader, he's already more experienced in the role, making his bigger problem his non-compliant robotic arm. Have you ever drifted off peacefully to sleep, only to be brutally awoken by your own prosthetic arm savagely killing you in the eye? Had to turn it off. Is that normal? What's that say? Something about there being a, a learning curve and whatnot. How I needed to learn how to trust it. I don't know. I'll tell you, I don't think I'll be using it to take a piss anytime soon. Next up, we get to really see how the two characters react differently to the same situation. When Grace arrives on the boat, she's another leader, instinctively giving out orders to both her people and Wyatt or Fergus, but both men deal with this in different ways. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Heck yes. What's up, boss? We sleeping in here. You got it, sister. <laughs> All right, listen up, people. White boy here is going to show you where to set up shop. After that, I want you to look around, find a place to bunk, get to know the boat folk. And hey, best behavior, you dig? This way. Hey, Englishman. I'm gonna need a new home for my people. Power outlets, radio room access, and a can. You got it? Please. Say what? Please. You ask for something, you say please, and don't fucking call me Englishman. Okay, you wanna step to me, motherfucker, you wanna get shit done. Cause I'm gay either way. Don't, don't mind that. Absolutely no control over the thing. Happy to oblige. What's up, boss? 
We bunking in here. Oh, you got it, sister. All right. Listen up, brothers and sisters. The uh, touchy Englishman is going to show you where to set up shop. After that, I want you to look around, find a place to bunk in, get to know the boat folk, and hey, don't start no shit. But don't take none either. Following on from this, Wyatt's hallucinations begin to get more extreme. He goes to set for help with his visions, who gives him a book of advanced philosophy to study. And while reading it, he has an interaction with Matt. Look, Max, I'm doing some, like, really heavy reading here, and your little toy robot is just not compatible with that type of soul journey, man, okay? Max, off. Max, it's all right, pal. Look, this just is way too complicated for you. Why don't you go play with your pig or something? See, I'm trying to find the reference to these gates here, and... Ugh, you just would not understand. Max, off. Max, this is really advanced philosophical <laughs> literature here, okay? You can't just start pointing to... <laughs> Max, that's it! How did you... Need you in the helm, Wyatt? Fergus has his own interaction with Matt, but it's a bit less kind. For Christ's sake! Where wasn't anyone watching it? Uh, Fergus, everyone is busy, no time for babysitting. Well, lock him up with a pig then, what's the problem? <laughs> Max, was... Our favourite shirt. Fuck, Max! <laughs> Following this, Fergus has another interaction with Grace. Once again, the two leaders are clashing. Hey, Englishman, you got nukes on this ship, did you know that? Oh, is that why it only took one of them to level Death's Head's entire fucking compound? You figured that out, oh great genius. Oh, so you knew, yet you only used the one. Explain that blip to me, shit for brains, because you are stupid for real. For fuck's sakes, you can't bloody well just go around dropping bombs on random civilians, you dim-witted bambot. Oh, eat me, cocksucker. I'm not saying we chunk nukes at a bunch of cities all willy-nilly, pencil dick. Do I look like a fucking Nazi to you? Wyatt has a similar scene, but he's much more supportive, and he's still tripping like hell. You got a boat full of nukes, and I got a target. Fucking good one, too. Woo! Right on, boss! Yeah, that's where it's at. That's cool, all right. I dig. <laughs> The storyline doesn't change for a little while after this, as you don't interact with either of them very much, but they do both have rather humorous reactions when you end up as a head in a jar. Hey, look at that jamming bastard! The only person on the planet hard enough to survive getting his head chopped off is the Blazkowicz! Holy cow! The god of immortal space fish swimming in his fishbowl! Hail space fish! It's the Blazkowicz! Following on from this, you prepare to head out to New Orleans. During the planning, Fergus has some more trouble with his arm, while Wyatt just continues to lose the plot. Window sill, umbrella, important. Then when you arrive in New Orleans, he takes some more drugs, and you can see another of his hallucinations. Fergus also has his own badass version of this scene, showing off one of his arm's new tricks. Later, Wyatt and Fergus also have two conflicting approaches on the best ways to get to the Nazi base on Venus. Oh, easy, man. I've got it all figured out. Oh, yeah? After you atom bombed the bejesus out of the old Ober Commando at Roswell, the Nazis ran scared. They took all their top brass, all their top military secrets, and they re-established the Ober Commando on Venus. Venus, the planetary body, Venus in space, man, it is cold. Up there, you're gonna need radioactive mittens. Mittens, nigga! Okay, we're just gonna fly there. We are gonna load up, and we're gonna fly. Uh -huh. Oh, man, we're just gonna take our choppers, but instead of only going so high, we are just gonna keep going straight up right into space with the mind, you know? Ever since you obliterated the Ober Commando at Roswell with a nuclear bloody warhead, the Nazis have been trying to shove the shite back into the horse. So, they moved the Ober Commando to another fucking planet to keep it away from us. All of their top brass, all their top military secrets have been moved to a fully secured base on Venus. Venus. There is no way you are making it to Venus, sunshine. I don't care how mighty your arsenal or how much fucking manpower, there is not a hope in hell you can bypass all that security. Yeah, not with that attitude. 
After this it's party time and we actually get a mission that's different depending on which timeline you're in. In the Fergus timeline, he parties a little too hard and loses his arm after a rather awkward situation with one of the female crew members. In the other timeline, Wyatt gets called out on his drug use and goes missing. I've seen you partake when you think nobody's watching. It's cool, man. I mean, I'm exploring. I'm just widening my horizons with the mind, you know? You ain't built for it. And when you do finally manage to track him down, he's really starting to lose the plot. I'm gonna take you to set. He's gonna fix you right up. You're, you're just a little confused as all. Come on now. No, 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 Wyatt. Buddy, remember? He saw perfect patterns. Swallowing branches of a great tree. The all-knowing space entity at the center gazing upon him. Uh, uh, the kid is approaching the apex of the universe. Uh, but it all slipped away. <laughs> and a colossal black trench opened up, swallowing the colors, and the kid couldn't see anything except for a trans-dimensional gaping maw swallowing his soul. Oh, nothing matters anymore, man. Oh, sunset for humanity. <sighs> Tell him that he's sorry. Tell him, tell him that he loved him. Back in the days of Das Yichid, we used similar substances many times. Never, ever, anyone had the clarity of vision that Wyatt has. It's remarkable. Will he be okay? Well, uh, I'm flushing his system right now. You should be fine. Now that Wyatt has his drug habit sorted out, we have the alternative endings to the game. In the Fergus version, the final speech is delivered as a team effort between many of the characters, while in Wyatt's, he steps up to give a passionate speech all by himself. Do it. Oh. Americans. Americans. Wherever you are. I wish I had words of comfort to give you, like the warm winds that this Nazi general sent down from above. But for me, you will not get comfort, only the cold, agonizing truth. And the truth is this great nation has been raped and pillaged by the greatest enemy of our time. They ask you to sell your liberty, to purchase your safety, to kneel to the new order, to submit to the winds of change. But my fellow Americans, they that sow the wind shall reap the whirlwind. Born in the land of the free, you fought the kings of old and broke them. You gave your lives for the simplest but most essential truth of all. Give me liberty or give me death. Head on, Wyatt. In your veins runs the blood of revolutionaries. So tonight, brandish your guns, your knives, and your fists. Seek out your oppressors wherever they are and tell them, we don't want nothing, not a thing from you. Tonight, we show those that sow the wind that we, we are the whirlwind. Did I do okay? <laughs> Fucking A, Wyatt, you were great. I was nervous, could you tell? <laughs> Shit, yeah. But that's okay. Here we go. Oh, Lord, look at you. 
artist. Stuff in your face. Full of bright words. Don't you sit in front of your Nazi television boxes? Just laughing. <laughs> laughing all the lies they've been feeding you. Laughing till you're choking. Well, it ends tonight. Tonight, my brothers and sisters of the United States of America, tonight, we, the free people of the resistance, ask you to become one of us. There's a lie. There's a lie. There's a threatening, there's a torture, there's a killing. They beat you in submission. They beat you. They, they made you, your very thoughts to cry. But if tonight, you gather, Speak freely from your heart. Yes. Or use one of us. Right on. And if tonight we see you on the streets with a knife, or a brick, or just your clenched fist fighting the powers that be, then you are one of us. And if tonight you look down upon your hands, and they soaked in the blood of our oppressors, then you use one of us. Yes. If tonight you hold your babies in your arms, I swear they'll grow up to be free people. Then you are one of us. Did you forget? They brought this war to our shores! Yes, yeah, sister. And then they beat us! They murdered us! They executed us! But guess what? Tonight? They also find out that they fucked with the wrong country. My brothers and sisters of the United States of America. When we stand together, ain't nothing and no one can take our country from us. Tonight, they burn. Tonight, you are one of us. Although Fergus doesn't say anything in his timeline's main speech, he does get his moment in the spotlight right at the end. I show up that the free people of Scotland will never lose an idol! So, which timeline did you choose, or have you played through them both? Let me know in the comments below. As always, this is James for Curse, saying thanks for watching and enjoy the game.